on the 20th day of October, Halloween gave to me 20 horse heads snorting, 19 D's renting, 18 Franks perving, 17 angels stripping, 16 demons jazzercising, 15 runes on parchment, 14 Joseph's whispering, 13 seniors bleeding, 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests of miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swamping, 5 reeds of wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of our 31 Days of Halloween. We have officially reached the 20 day mark in our celebration of all things horrific. And this is a listener request. It's a really interesting movie by the name of Horsehead. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it is available on Shudder. So uh, if you would like to check it out, that is where you may do so. This is, uh, I believe it's the first feature uh, from a French director named Romain Bessette. Um, the first, yeah, first feature. And it stars, uh, as, uh, the, the central character, Jessica Lily Fleur Pointeau. Um, and her mother is, uh, named Caitlin, played by Katrina McCall. Uh, and, uh, anyway, th those are the two main characters. And then there's some doctors and a stepfather, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, what is Horset about? I, I had no frame of reference for this movie whatsoever other than it had been recommended and thank you again for recommending uh, the movie um, so it is about a, a young girl who is returning to a childhood home where she is uh, there for the death of her grandmother and is staying with her mother and her uh, stepfather and her mother is a very cold and aloof kind of woman uh, her stepfather is a little cooler is not in the uh you know chilly to her emotion sense but just a little more laid back a little more uh sympathetic and um jessica the main character is sort of beset by uh visions in her dreams of this horse-headed figure and uh is sort of haunted to some degree by these uh, strange dreams and has been working on learning how to lucid dream. And lucid dreaming is something I'm actually really fascinated by. It's something that when I was a younger man in college, I was really obsessed with the idea of it and made some steps towards it. But it turns out it's kind of difficult. You basically have to train yourself to do it. And at that time, I wasn't quite so disciplined. And these days, I just have less of a need, I suppose. Um, but there is an idea that, hey, with being able to teach yourself or train yourself to lucid dream can have a lot of like psychological benefits. And the idea of lucid dreaming is that you're just aware that you are in a dream. And so you can control it. You're not at the whim of your subconscious uh, flashing images across the, the movie screen of your brain you can tell yourself like, oh, this is a dream, and then you can start to shape and control that dream. And it's a really interesting idea, and there's a lot of uh, research that suggests that it's psychologically beneficial because you can, uh, you know, if you're in the middle of a nightmare or there's some trauma that is being uh, replayed in your mind, that you can kind of stop it. You can make uh, your, your nighttime dreams something pleasant and empowering, as opposed to uh, being terrorized by nightmares and so forth. So that is, is sort of the premise. She, she is a lucid dreamer. When she returns to uh, this house, she starts to have, you know, further visions in her dreams of these largely symbolic kind of figures. There's this horse-headed uh, creature that looks to be like a priest, and then there's a wolf, uh, and she sees images of like her grandmother uh, being tortured uh, and, and that kind of thing. And so it is a deeply, deeply European movie. Um, it is both artsy and fartsy. 
And uh, throughout the course of the film, you know, you get these uh, sort of dreamscapes in which um, Jessica is is trying to figure out the secret of uh, her own past in a lot of ways and also come to grips with the fact that her mother just doesn't seem to be um, very interested in her and, and kind of pushes her away and so forth. And, and Jessica is, uh, you know, wrestling with that as, as you do. If you've ever been in a relationship with a parent who can be very distant, it, uh, it, it does a lot to you psychologically, you know, it, it lowers your self-esteem and makes you, uh, a little uncertain in ways like it, it certainly doesn't do anything for your confidence, I would argue. Um, so at any rate, all of that is, is happening. Uh, and as she's, you know, going into these dreams, she's also taking some ether to get herself back to sleep, you know. Uh, it's like fear and loathing in your subconscious in a lot of ways, this movie. And yeah, so she's kind of, you know, ferreting out the mysteries of her past and of her mother's past in a, in a large way. And so, um, at the end of the day, here's, here's kind of what I thought about Horsehead. I thought it is beautiful. It reminded me a lot at times of The Cell, the, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, Jennifer Lopez uh, film um, that also kind of takes place in a dreamscape that's probably a little more elaborate and ornate um, and certainly a more expensive film like this movie aside from the horse-headed figure you know not a lot in the way of uh, special effects and whatnot but some interesting visuals to be sure and so it plays in that territory it's it's visually arresting in fact I would say the thing that most recommends the movie is how good the visuals are. Uh, I think the performances are quite good as well, and there are a couple of moments that even reminded me of like Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street, the original Elm Street, uh, in terms of dealing with the sort of dream logic and, and moving from the real world into the dream world. And that's another big thing that you run across in Horsehead is this idea of like, what is real, what is not? When are we in a dream? When are we not in a dream? And it, and it uncovers this um, complicated relationship between the main character and her mother that I think the, the end of the movie is a little vague, uh, I find. Um, it, and again, because it's dealing with dreams and stuff, it's, it's a heavily symbolic and metaphorical kind of movie. But I think the, that ultimately where you land is this sort of moral story about how the relationship between a parent and child can be incredibly destructive um, for the both parent and child. And, and particularly because, and it's sort of visiting the sins of the father and the mother onto the child. Like, uh, the grandfather character in this is sort of this horrific character and um, this uh, dark figure that looms over the happenings of the film. And certainly has a great influence on Jessica's mother, who in turn seems to uh, have this resentment toward her own child. And uh, so, you know, that all of that stuff is interesting. Um, it, like I said, it, it plays out in a highly symbolic way uh, throughout the course of the film. My biggest problem with the movie, and, and apologies uh, for you know, the, for not really getting behind something that was recommended to me, but you know, uh, such is life. I, I think it's fine. Um, I, I think visually it's incredible. I think as a narrative, it is at times a little dull. And I, you know, I, I know that's kind of a jerk thing to say, um, about a movie that, you know, does operate in this kind of dreamscape and so forth. And I wish that stuff were exciting enough to kind of pull you through the narrative, but it's just such a dark movie. And I don't mean that the, the themes of the film are dark, although that's true, but the movie itself is very dark. And it also sort of spins its wheels a little bit. Like, you know, as you're uncovering this mystery, it's not like you have these moments of revelation. It, it's that 
even the answers are very vague. Um, there, there's a, a scene where uh, Jessica goes to the local priest and he speaks in very vague terms about here's, you know, something terrible happened in the chapel years ago. And, oh, you don't know what happened to your mother? Well, you know, she was uh, she was a, uh, something when she was younger. And, of course, that led to some other uh, troubles. But, you know, no no reason to get into the detail of that. And on the one hand, I don't mind a movie that doesn't spoon feed everything to the viewer. Um, but on the other hand, it would be great if the movie gave you something to kind of dig your fingers into and uh, as far as a narrative hook. And I don't feel like we know that much about Jessica other than she's sort of troubled and is living in the uh, in the wake of her mother's sort of cold emotional states and whatnot. And yeah, I th- like it's interesting and I don't like I'm not not recommending it. I think it's like if you're looking for something that is this really artistic look at, at dr- the dream world and, you know, how your subconscious manifests your insecurities and uh, your trauma and that sort of thing. It, it's a good take on that, but I don't know that it's terribly entertaining it's very pretty, um, but I don't know that I had a great time watching it. And maybe, you know, as with all this stuff, it could have been a... Hey, 